pretty nice scenes in the room post-match. How enjoyable was that? Yeah, well, it's always special when you get a milestone ga game like Luke McDonald playing his 200th game this week. And, um, you know, the fact that he's a father-son, you know, there's... Um, it's a couple of generations of McDonald's been involved in that footy club. You know, it's um, it's pretty it's pretty special. You know, you, you throw on top of that the fact that we haven't won too many games over the last little while. Then, um, yeah, needless to say, it was hardly a um, a convincing victory, but we'll take them any way we can get them at the moment. What was the most impressive part of it? Um, well, I loved the. I love the battle between the, the two big bulls in the ruck. You know, the Nankurva, Sherry. Um, yeah, and I, Nank probably won't like me saying this, but <laughs> he's, he's probably well and truly into the, into the twilight of his career and, and Sherry's just um, just getting going with his. So I just, I just love that battle. You know, it was just pure, pure footy at its best. Uh, two big bulls going at it. And, um, I really enjoyed the the battle between um, Archer and Bolton. Um, yeah, we rate him very, very highly. Bolton, he's a very, very clever player, um, very creative, and he, he he does scoreboard damage on a regular basis. So for Arch to keep him to you know 12 touches and uh, have have 20 himself, and I think I think shot Bolton got a got a goal right at the start of the. The third quarter, but <laughs> Archer's fist is just right there. You know, like it. Um, I think for all all North supporters who have just watched this kid emerge over the course of the year, uh, particularly the last eight to ten weeks, we've given him some really big jobs, no bigger than today's, and um, he just continues to grow as a player. And um, we, we shouldn't be surprised given his surname, but um, we're just wrapped with his progress, and um, think we've really found a player there. How are you? Pretty important as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's, he's kicked three. Um, that third one, I think he kicked off his kneecap, which was a bit fortunate. But um, yeah, he made a, he made a blue on his. Um, he's such a he's such a proud man, such a competitor. He made a made a blue where he turned the footy over and Richmond got a goal. And then um, out of the centre bounce, the very next play, he laid a tackle, got on the end of the ball, kicked the goal himself. You know, that's. That's what you love about um, those type of players that want to compete and who've got such pride in their performance. If they make a mistake, they want to rectify it as soon as they possibly can. And um, you know, if you didn't have scoreboard impact like he did with three goals, as well as um, being probably the most dominant midfielder on on the ground, um, yeah, he's had, he's had a really really good year for us and uh, continues to grow as a player, continues to grow as a leader within the walls of our footy club. And um, yeah, we're uh, we're going to be uh, better as a footy club because of the input that, that he contributes to our team. Alistair, how did you think your defenders went today? Condon, Cor, and I know Jaden Stevenson, when, they, when the pressure was really on, they really stood up, particularly in that last quarter when the Tigers were, were starting to make a bit of a charge. Yeah, yeah. You know, Condon and Cor, um, in, in particular, they were, um, they were really, really strong for us. And, um, you know, they had... Uh, had to defend a lot of inside inside fifties. Now Richmond ended up having sixty inside fifties. I think twenty of those came in the first quarter. You know, the first the first fifteen minutes of the game was a was a horror story for uh, for our side. You know, they they had uh, I think they had fifteen inside fifties in the first ten or fifteen minutes of the game, and we just could not get it out of our back end. And so, you know, to to have sixty inside fifties against and only ten goals by the opposition. Um, I think it was 10 that the Tigers kicked, um, was probably testament to those, uh, those bigger lads actually providing the contest for us for, to repel some of those, those attacks by the, by the Tigers and, and Core and Common were a, were a key part of negating that. And also, the, the, I felt like a little bit in the last quarter you, you tended to overuse the handball, but that was more for trying to get through that zone that Richmond were doing in the middle of the ground. So how did you sort of assess that, and particularly in the, the latter part of the game, because it, it felt like you were nearly going in, back into self-preservation mode? Yeah, well, Rich, in Richmond's DNA is this capacity to turn the game into chaos and quick ball movement, and they, they needed to do that. They were three goals down at three-quarter time. We pr half predicted that they were going to take enormous risks. And, you know, we had... Um, what, 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 what comes with taking enormous risk with the, with the footy yourself is the risk you're going to turn it over and 
give opportunities to the opposition. Um, and we had those opportunities early in the last quarter and we just couldn't capitalise on them. You know, Richmond were needing to take risks to get themselves back into the game and, and to try and win it. Um, and we just didn't capitalise on some of the turnovers. With, with the risk came the opportunity for us to get the ball back and we did. And we didn't um, use it anywhere near as well as we could on the way back to punish them. And, um, you yeah, know, that's to the credit of the, uh, the Richmond side. And, um, that's why, as a, as a club, they've won flags over the last you know, six to eight years. But um, yeah, we just we're we're in a, a a learning phase with that as a as a young group. You know, we're the um, we're the youngest side in the competition this week by a by a long way and a, a significant. You know, we're giving up you know 40 or 50 games of experience across the board to the Richmond side today, as well as a couple of years. So um, for us to for us to win that game of footy, there's still a significant amount of players in that side that are Richmond Premiership players and um, so we'll take some confidence out of that that we were down and out early and found a way to get back into the game in the second and third quarter and didn't manage the first part of the, the last quarter as well as we'd like but probably from about the 10 or 15 minute mark of the last quarter to the end of the game thought we managed things a hell of a lot better than we did in the first 10 minutes of the last quarter. Do you see it as a reward for effort for over the last five or six weeks you've taken it up to some top eight sides? Yeah, we'll take any win as we can get right at the moment, as I, as I said earlier. But yeah, our um, um, our consistency around applying ourselves to contests in that part of the game since since the bye is, has, has been really strong, and it was, it was strong again today. But both sides just made a lot of a lot of errors with the with the footy today by hand and foot, and a lot of a lot of turnover goals and. Um, both sides are going to need to get better at that if they're going to progress up the ladder, us included. Um, you know, kicking efficiency, handball efficiency is going to need to improve for both of our sides. I'm sure Ooze will say the same thing about his, his boys at Tigerland. So, um, but you know, we um, have competed really, really strongly over the last little while, and you give yourself um, you give yourself a chance if you can compete in the contest strongly. For the second year in a row, you pushed away from the bottom of the ladder late in the season. Last year, there was a bit of negative commentary around that. How does it feel today? Um, oh, it's, never, it's never part of the DNA of coaches or, or players, really, to, uh, to go easy on opposition. I quite often talk to our, our players about it. It's like, uh, it's like getting a pair of boxing gloves for Christmas from your parents when you're a kid and you're boxing with your brother and you're just you know, dancing around and everything's a bit of shadow boxing until, um, until one punch just hits a little bit harder than you expect it to do and then it's, then it's game on. Um, and that's just, that's just against your brother. Um, so these boys want to compete, they want to play, they want to, uh, they want to win. Um, and um, we'll take as many wins as we possibly can and where that ends us up with, in terms of ladder position and draft picks and that sort of stuff, it's like that'll, that'll work itself out, you know. And, um, particularly in this draft where it's just so it's just so even, um, then you know wins are more important to this footy club right now than um, than worrying about where we finish on the ladder. And you'd be pretty happy with Dersmer as a pick after today. It was pretty good in the air. Yeah, listen, he's he's uh, he got a lot to learn in the game, but um, you know his his potency with um, with the ball in flight is really really strong, and you know he took a took a great catch um, today, but. Um, you know, he, he was um, not quite as dangerous or as, um, or as involved in the game as, as, as we'd like. And um, that's just a learning curve for a, for a young player. It's really, really hard for any player in the competition, really, to be a consistent contributor as a forward. Uh, that's why we're just so pleased with what Archer was able to do on Bolton, because he has shown over a long period of time that he can play that forward midfield role really, really well. And, you know, he falls between the cracks a little bit, Bolton, because he does spend time forward midfield on the handover between players and that sort of stuff is where he does his damage. Um, so, um, yeah, for, for young Dersma, he just needs to learn learn that craft. It's a, it's a tough caper, and um, but he's he's progressing nicely for us. You've got West Coast next week, another good opportunity for a win. How important is it for the group to learn to back up a win with another good performance? Yeah, well, they were really impressive last night against against Gold Coast over in the West, and um, a little bit a little bit like the Tigers, you know. They, if, if you look at the spine of their side, you know, with Allen and Darling and um, Waterman in their front end and their their back end um, with um, with McGovern and 
Um, not sure if Barras will be back next week or not, but if they've got those, if Barras comes back, you know, the spine of their club is actually really strong. And, you know, with, uh, with Kelly and, and Duggan and these guys through the middle of the ground. So, yeah, they they played some good footy last night, but they're, they're last a uh, little bit like us. And, you know, the Tigers haven't been dreadful in the last six or eight weeks either. You know, they've been really, really competitive. And, you know, we were concerned, you know, with Nan Curvis, um, Obviously, Dusty he can be a superstar, obviously, and um, and Graham coming into the side, you know, anything anything can happen. They're experienced Premiership players, all three of those guys, and the same thing with West Coast. You know, they've got some experienced senior players that have played a lot of footy. So um, we're pleased that it's down at Blundstone. That'll make it perhaps a little bit easier for us that it's our home ground rather than theirs. But they're a formidable side playing good footy, um, and um, if we allow them to get off the chain and play the way they want to play, they'll, they'll do damage to any opposition and it's our challenge to try to negate some of their strengths.